my name is Trey. I wanted to just um, introduce my drum. Can y'all hear me? Is everything good? Everything good? Okay. Um, I wanted to introduce my drum. So this drum is made in Ghana, West Africa. Um, and this on, on here engraved are some Indigra symbols. Um, so this one right here is called the Akofina. This is the Swords of War. Um, and so I think I, I thought it was very appropriate to describe that today. And then on the back is the Akoben, and that's the war horn. So this is like the invitation to be ready to offer, offer your hearts, offer your spirits. And so um, I just wanted to first usher in the ancestors, um, the martyrs of Palestine and the Palestine Liberation Fronts, um, as well as the martyrs of Sudan, of Congo, West Papua, Haiti, um, and all oppressed people across the world. Um, I wanted to usher in El Haj Malik El Shabazz um, and Dr. Betty Shabazz, who space we're in today. Um, as well, I wanted to offer, uh, usher in one of our newest ancestors, uh, Baba Sekou Odinga, um, who just transitioned uh, January 12th, um, so just a few days ago. So I want everybody, can everybody just take a deep breath in? Release. Take a deep breath in again. Release. One last time, take a brief breath in and hold it. Release. So the song I'm going to be singing today is called Breaths by Sweet Honey on the Rock. Um, Dr. Bernice Johnson Regan and Issei Barnwell, as well as all the other revolutionary phenomenal women that make up that group, um, have really given us a lot of offerings. And so I need everybody's interaction. So everybody is participating, everybody's gonna be singing. So for our lower voices, I just want you to sing, it's gonna be on a loop. So it's gonna be a lower voices part and a higher voices part. So, and it's not that low, it's not that high. So the lower voices, I just want you to say, bum, 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 bum. Bum 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 bee da bum 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 bee da bum 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 bee da Y'all sound beautiful. Listen more often to things and to beings. Listen more often to things and to beings. Tis the ancestors' words when the fire's voice is heard. Tis the ancestors' breaths in the voice of the water. Those who have died have never, never left. The dead are not under the earth. They are in the rustling trees. They are in the morning woods. They are in the crying grass. They are in the morning rocks. The dead are not under the earth. So listen more often to things and to beings. Whoa, listen more often to things and to beings. Tis the ancestors' words where the fire's voice is heard. Tis the ancestors' breath in the voice of the water. Those who have died have never, never left. The dead have a pact with the living.
They are in the mother's breast. They are in the wailing child. They are with us in the home. They are with us in the crowd. The dead have a pact with the living. So listen more often to things and to beings. Oh, listen more often to things and to beings. Tis the ancestors' words where the fire's voice is heard. Tis the ancestors' breath in the voice of the water. Those who have died have never, never left. The dead are not under the earth. They are with us. They are with us. The dead have a pact with the living. So listen. Whoa, listen. Tis the ancestors. Tis the ancestors. Let's give it up for Trey Legal. Yeah. Round of applause. So. Great. Revolutionary greetings. My name is Richie Marino, and I'm honored to chair this panel on worker struggles and building internationalism. This discussion centers around the concept of internationalism, a fundamental principle that highlights the interconnectedness of the struggle against imperialism, capitalism, and the fight for socialism on a global scale. We gather here today in the spirit of socialist revolution, embracing indigenous-led struggles against occupation, colonialism and imperialism, struggles studied and theorized by Vladimir Lenin, who understood and articulated the power of international solidarity. From this perspective, we also recognize the works of Ghassan Kanafani, a Palestinian writer and popular front for the liberation of Palestine, PFLP leader, whose words struck fear into the hearts of European colonizers. Kanafani devoted himself to Palestinian national liberation, anti-imperialism and internationalism. He wrote, quote, imperialism has laid its body over the world, the head in Eastern Asia, the heart in the Middle East, its arteries reaching Africa and Latin America, wherever you strike it, you damage it, and you serve the world revolution. In the spirit of in, in the spirit of internationalism, we affirm that the struggle for Palestinian liberation and return is inextricably linked to the global fight against racism, capitalism, imperialism, and Zionism wherever they manifest. Today, I'm also representing the Bronx Anti-War Coalition. Yeah. It, In our work, we emphasize the direct connections between the struggles faced by the people of the Bronx and those endured by the people of Gaza and occupied Palestine. It is crucial that we recognize the profound similarities that bind us together, understanding that our, our liberation is inseparately tied to theirs. In our statements and street demos, we ensure our communities know they are actively engaged in a global worker struggle against capitalism and the oppressive forces of US Western imperialism. In the South Bronx, we confront an array of oppressions, including NYPD violence, 
poverty, hunger, underfunded schools, lack of clean air and water, homelessness, and crumbling infrastructure. Our struggle, struggles echo those faced by the Palestinian people who resist European settler colonialism and Zionist military occupation. It is imperative that we comprehend the direct in interdependence of our liberation struggles with that of Palestine. Consider the reality of millions of Palestinians in Gaza forcibly uprooted from their homes by Israel's unrelenting military bombardments. Simultaneously, the Zionist entity bulldozes homes in the West Bank, replacing them with Israeli settlements. This mirrors the displacement occurring within the South Bronx, where NYCHA public housing is systematically defunded and privatized, leading to the displacement of poor and working class Bronxites, predominantly of African, Latin, and indigenous descent. This paves the way for gentrification. We recognize that urban gentrification is another manifestation of settler colonialism within the empire. We also recognize that our so-called U.S. representatives are controlled by Zionists and billionaire real estate developers. One such figure, Richie Torres, plays a direct role in the ethnic cleansing of both Palestine and the South Bronx. Last month, a building collapsed in the poor and working class neighborhood of Morris Heights, revealing over 100 safety violations. Residents had been sounding the alarm for years, yet no action was taken. Why? Because servants of the US-led Western Empire, like Richie Torres, prioritize funding indiscriminate bombing and the destruction of Gaza, displacing millions of Palestinians over investing in housing for working class Bronxites in his own district, one of the poorest congressional districts in the US. Witnessing our neighbors' homes crumbling while our tax dollars are funneled into bombing and ethnically cleansing Gaza is a radicalizing experience. Furthermore, we must acknowledge that many New York City vulture capitalist landlords identify as Zionists. They extort our people with high rents and then use that stolen wealth to fund Zionist settlements in occupied Palestine. Let me be clear. We in the South Bronx, like the Palestinians, are fighting Zionist oppression. This is why we assert that we are facing one genocidal ethnic cleansing campaign with two fronts, one right here in the South Bronx and the other in Palestine. We cannot forget the plight of over 10,000 Palestinian prisoners, including women and children, unjustly incarcerated in Israeli occupation jails without charges or a fair trial. Their suffering resonates deeply with us as we have witnessed decades-long mass incarceration campaigns targeting our black and Latinx neighbors. The same systemic mass incarceration that afflicts our community, tearing families apart, is also happening in occupied Palestine. While New York City spends billions of dollars incarcerating our neighbors, the federal government shamelessly allocates over $4 billion annually to kidnap and imprison Palestinian men, women, and children in Israel. City officials claim they lack the resources to address urgent repairs needed in NYCHA housing, to fix and pave our streets, roads, and sidewalks, or repair the broken subway system. They tell us they cannot afford to feed our children and seniors, leaving them starving, just like the Palestinians in Gaza who suffer from a US-backed Israeli siege. Moreover, the NYPD maintains an office in Israel and trains alongside the Israeli occupation forces, exchanging suppression and surveillance tactics. They perpetuate the same racist violence that plagues our community at the hands of the police. It is of utmost importance to understand that the struggles faced by the South Bronx and workers worldwide share a profound connection with Gaza and Palestine. Our battles are intertwined and our liberation is inextricably tied to the liberation of Palestine. Our duty as internationalists and as revolutionaries is to make the, these connections as clear and direct as possible to workers in our own communities so that we build a global united front against imperialism. 
So in this spirit, join me or us in one of our favorite chants. It goes, same struggle, same fight, Gaza and the Bronx unite. Same struggle, same fight, Gaza and the Bronx unite. Same struggle, same fight, Gaza and the Bronx unite. Same struggle, same fight, Gaza and the Bronx unite. Death to imperialism, long live proletarian internationalism. Thank you, comrades. So our first panelist is Carlos Martinez, who's the founder of Friends of Socialist China and the No Cold War campaign. Dear comrades and friends, it's a great honor for Friends of Socialist China to be invited to contribute to this International Assembly Against Imperialism in solidarity with the Palestinian resistance and coinciding with the 100th anniversary of the death of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin. What ties together these seemingly disparate themes of Palestine, China and Leninism? The answer lies in the struggle against imperialism. The original slogan of the communist movement, Workers of the World Unite, the rallying cry and final phrase from the Communist Manifesto, written by Marx and Engels in 1848, was put forward at a time when the nascent communist movement was geographically limited to Europe and North America and focused almost exclusively on the industrial working class. Lenin's study of global political economy, and particularly of the dynamics of monopoly capitalism and the emergence of modern imperialism, led him to an acute understanding of the expanded global applicability of Marxist thought. He understood that as a result of imperialist domination, the capitalist class of the metropolis had become an enemy, not just to the working class in the advanced capitalist countries, but to the broad masses of the oppressed in all countries. Lenin and the Bolsheviks thus proposed the development of a worldwide united front of the working class and all peoples oppressed by imperialism. Such a united front would be capable, indeed still is capable, of taking the fight to the oppressors, of defeating imperialism, of establishing national independence and sovereignty for the peoples of the global south, and thereby opening the possibility for a global advance to socialism. Hence, at the Second Congress of the Comintern in 1920, Workers of the World Unite was updated to Workers and Oppressed Peoples of All Countries Unite. In his letter titled Better Fewer But Better, the last document he wrote, Lenin observed that in the last analysis, the outcome of the struggle will, will be determined by the fact that Russia, India, China, etc. account for the overwhelming majority of the population of the globe. And during the past few years, it is this majority which has been drawn into the struggle for emancipation with extraordinary rapidity, so that in respect, there cannot be the slightest doubt what the final outcome of the world struggle will be. In this sense, the complete victory of socialism is fully and absolutely assured. The Chinese communists, of course, played a crucial role in developing this ideology and applying it in practice. The overthrow of imperialist domination and the construction of socialism in China, Korea and Vietnam represented a profound shift of the revolutionary centre of gravity in the world towards the East and the South. The Chinese benefited enormously from the solidarity of the Soviet peoples. Mao Zedong stated in 1949, just two months before the proclamation of the People's Republic, that it was through the Russians that the Chinese found Marxism. The salvos of the October Revolution brought us Marxism-Leninism. The October Revolution helped progressives in China, as throughout the world, to adopt the proletarian world outlook as the instrument for studying a nation's destiny and considering anew their own problems. In turn, China has been and remains a bulwark against imperialism, standing in solidarity with the global south. China's history of support for the Palestinian national struggle in particular goes back to the 1950s. As Xi Jinping has put it, no matter how the international and regional situation changes, China always firmly supports the just cause of the Palestinian people to restore the legitimate rights and interests of their nation and always stands with the Palestinian people. China sent its first aid to the Palestinian people in 1960 and when the PLO was founded in 1964, China became the first non-Arab country to recognise it. The first Palestinian fighters were sent for military training in China in 1965. China was also one of the first countries to recognise the state of Palestine on 20th of November 1988. 
Indeed, Yasser Arafat, chairman of the PLO from 1969 to 2004, stated in 1970 that China is the biggest influence in supporting our revolution and strengthening its perseverance. Premier Zhou Enlai wrote in 1967, Wherever there is oppression, there is resistance. Wherever there is aggression, there is struggle against aggression. I believe that having taken up arms, the revolutionary Arab people of Palestine and the entire Arab people will not lay down their arms and, like the heroic Vietnamese people, will fight on unflinchingly, resolutely and stubbornly until final victory. Today, China is among the loudest voices calling for a ceasefire in Gaza and insistently calling for the restoration of the legitimate national rights of Palestine and for the establishment of an independent state of Palestine with East Jerusalem as its capital and with the right of return. The heroic Palestinian resistance has put the issue of Palestine back at the centre of global politics. Meanwhile, the shift towards a multipolar world and away from US hegemony is creating favourable conditions for finding a lasting and just solution. Even as we witness the horrors of Israel's genocidal assault on Gaza, we remember the words of the great Paul Robeson, that the people's will for freedom is stronger than atom bombs. The brave Palestinian people, with the solidarity and support of freedom-loving people around the world, will surely win their liberation. Thank you very much. Next up, we have Alice Yeser, who is a founding member of the Marxist Youth League in Buffalo, New York. Let's give it up for Alice. Good afternoon. How you doing? Good to hear. I hope to present to you what I think is an original contribution to the political dialogue by working class and oppressed youth. The Marxist Youth League, as an organization that strives to mobilize the younger members of our class, finds the works and contributions of Lenin to be of vital importance. The youth of today are bittered and frustrated. We currently face a great stagnation of wages, higher costs and necessities, lack of affordable housing, saying nothing of the great mass of predatory student loans that collect like raindrops in a basin. And for those who are oppressed on the, base, uh, on the basis of our gender, nationality, queerness, or disability, we face even greater hostility in every aspect of life under capitalism. Our dreams once occupied by ideals of security fed to us by institutions beholden to capital and by family and friends who have bought the lies of capitalism have become disillusioned by a socioeconomic order that seeks our subjugation. As the contradictions between labor and capital intensify, we grow more desperate for answers and solutions. So we've turned to Lenin. We've learned from Lenin the cause of our woes and how to permanently better them. We've learned to reject every appendage of capital every parasitic tendril sent down into the bellies of our neighborhoods, our schools, our workplaces. From our desperation and from our struggle, we aim to emerge as a full fighting force for our class. A note must be made about the ongoing genocide of Palestinians. Many of the slaughtered were young people. That's true, and you all know this. But prior to the genocide, the average Gazan was said to be 19. We've seen countless clips of lifeless bodies of infants and young children. However, what is not impressed as harshly enough from all the coverage is that the resistance is also made up of brave young fighters who dare hold rifles to the tanks and jet planes of their oppressors. In the case of the resistance at home, In the case of the resistance at home, in the Imperial Corps, several demonstrations were organized by youth in our community and within high school and college campuses. College campuses especially have become a political battleground contested by both reactionary and progressive forces. If we learn from this one thing, it is that we mustn't underestimate the role of youth in revolutionary movements.
as youth engaged with the sciences of Marxism, Leninism, we are a danger to the ruling class. We hold the future in our hands, and there lie tremendous tasks before us. The current order of capitalist domination and exploitation is untenable, and it cannot be allowed to ruin us. It must be overthrown, and it will require grand participation of young people from all walks of life, working class and oppressed people here and abroad, and only then can we hope to secure freedom for all. Thank you. Next up, next up we have a video message that's sent from Ukraine. Leonid Elderkin, who's in the Ukrainian Communist Party and the Union of Political Refugees and Political Prisoners of Ukraine. Hello, dear comrades and friends. My name is Leonid Ilderkin. I am member. I am member of uh, a Coordination Council of the Union of Political Emigrants and Political Prisoners of Ukraine. On behalf of our union, I sincerely greet the event held uh, by Workers World Party and the Peace Movement of USA, dedicated to uh, commemoration of 100 years of Vladimir Ilyich Lenin that uh, passed away 100 years ago. There is a lot to say about our struggle against the Kiev regime. Uh, history will tell a lot about it because it, is, it has become already much of history since more than 10 years already passed uh, from the beginning of the coup in Kiev, in capital city of Ukraine, when it began in uh, December 1st of uh, 2013. Now it is uh, already January of 2024. So more than 10 years. During all of, all of this struggle, we combat the worst type of uh, political activities of uh, capitalism. This is called uh, ultranationalism and uh, Nazi, Nazi and fascist dictatorship. And now it is in Ukraine in its uh, extreme forms. But <clears throat> we are very happy that we are not alone in this struggle. What unites us today and after and before is not only commemoration of the of uh, Lenin and uh, ideas of Lenin and Karl Marx and other uh, activists and political figures who were uh, who had efforts for the liberation of humankind. But also, also what unites us now is our actual struggle. Be uh, besides organizing the Union of Political Emigrants from Ukraine and Political Prisoners of Ukraine from 2014, we organized it later uh, with the help of our supporters from abroad, we organized it later the uh, community of activists which is called for us Red Square Club and abroad it is called a Molotov Club. This community of activists from different continents, from different parts of the world, support the stand against Ukrainian Nazis and against NATO and against neo-colonialism and against war. And the war is now progressing, unfortunately, in many parts of the world, not only there in Ukraine, we have uh, very heavy uh, civil conflict, which is now the full-scale conflict. But no, uh, now we have situation of conflict 
in Palestine, in Gaza. We have also uh, recent attacks of USA and England and Great Britain against Yemen. And we see that imperialism does want war to save capitalism, to save uh, the situation of capitalist crisis. Recently, actually one week ago, one of our members, members of uh, this club which I mentioned, Abul Hussein from Bangladesh, from Workers' Party of Bangladesh, head of uh, the um, Workers' Party organization in the capital city of Dhaka, and also head of one of unions, of trade unions of Bangladesh, and you know how much important is Bangladesh, because they produce fabric for many, uh, for, the, uh, for the whole world. He uh, had initiative of the uh, World's Peace Conference. This co combined now with efforts of Ukrainian diaspora, with the Ukrainian war zone, conflict zone, refugees, together with Ukrainian opposition, these uh, uh, efforts we make campaign uh, during all the month of December which is past, and now in uh, January we make campaign for peace negotiations in Ukraine against the weapons supply to Ukraine. We invite you to join to these efforts, both to efforts for the World's Peace Conference and to campaign against uh, the weapons supply and for the negotiation peace talks about Ukraine. And we congratulate you with this commemoration date. And this date calls us all for action, for better tomorrow, against war, against imperialism, for socialism and peace. Thank you very much. Next up, we have a statement from Carlos Lopez Pereira, who is a journalist for the Portuguese Communist Party newspaper Avant, former member of the Secretariat of the African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde. And the statement will be read by Janice Miles. Good afternoon, comrades. Good afternoon. Oh, duh. Good afternoon, comrades. Good afternoon. <laughs> the following are excerpts from Carlos Lopez Pereira. This International Anti-Imperialist Day, marking the centenary of Lenin's death, is rightly dedicated to solidarity with the resistance of the heroic people of Palestine, who are facing yet another stage in the criminal war of extermination waged by the Israeli state, with the complicity and support of the US and its allies. By coincidence, the 2024, well, 2024 also marks the year of the 100th anniversary of the birth of Amilcar Cabral, the revolutionary leader of the PAIGC, African Party for the Independence of Guinea and Cape Verde, who organized and led the victorious struggle for the national independence in both countries from the mid-1950s until his cowardly assassination in 1973 by agents of Portuguese colonialism. Faced with the colonial fascist dictatorship's refusal of a peaceful situation, Cabral began the armed struggle of the people of Guinea in January 1963 and clandestinely organized the PAIGC in Cape Verde. On the 24th of September, 1973, in the Bowie Forest, in the liberated areas, a National People's Assembly elected in the middle of the war proclaimed the birth of the Republic of Guinea-Bissau. On April 25th, 1974, less than a year and a half after Cabal's shameful assassination, progressive sectors of the Portuguese armed forces overthrew the 48-year-old fascist colonial dictatorship in Portugal and paved the way for the April Revolution and the end of Portuguese colonialism in Africa. Years earlier, in 1965, Cabral referred to the question of Palestine, speaking in Dar es Salaam, 
during the work of the Second Conference of Nationalist Organizations of the Portuguese Colonies. In the Tanzanian capital, Cabral said, we are with the refugees, the martyred refugees from Palestine who have been reviled, expelled from their homeland by the maneuvers of imperialism. We stand with the refugees of Palestine and we support with all of the strength of our hearts everything that the children of Palestine are doing to liberate their country and we support with all our strength the Arab countries and the African countries in general to help the Palestinian people regain their dignity, their independence and their right to life. Thank you. Next, we're going to listen to a message that was sent to us by Provas Ghosh, who's the General Secretary of Socialist Unity Center of India, Communist. Dear comrades, on the occasion of the centenary of the death of the great Lenin, remembering his teachings is of paramount importance. He taught us that this is an era of, quote, imperialism, war, and proletarian revolutions, end quote. His work shows the basic cause for the present problems of the world. In this era, it is imperialism that generates war and the proletarian revolutions will be its antithesis. And they need to be accelerated if we really mean to end all wars in the world. So long that the world socialist camp led by the Soviet Union existed, it acted as a citadel of world peace. In 1956, the Soviet Union could stop the threat of imperialist attack during the Suez Canal crisis. Today, that camp is absent after dismantling of socialism due to the conspiracy of the internal forces who were opposed to socialism and the external bourgeois sources. Had that camp been here today, Israel could not have let loose the barbarity on the Palestinians. <laughs> World imperialism capitalism is resorting to local and partial wars because it is embroiled in ever increasing and everlasting severe crisis as was foretold by great Lenin that, quote, imperialism is the moribund stage of capitalism, end quote. Recently, we saw a war in Ukraine and now in Gaza. The war field may have shifted from one region to another, but the basic cause for it remains the same. The barbaric attack on Palestine by Israel is backed overtly by US imperialists and their allies resulting in the slaughtering of thousands of people, including children, women, and destroying villages, towns with homes, schools, hospitals. World peace movement conducive to the proletarian revolutions is the call of the hour. Our party is with you, expressing solidarity with the forces fighting to stop war and save Palestine. On this death centenary of Great Lenin, let us all unite to end war and save Palestine. With revolutionary greetings, Privash Ghosh, General Secretary. Next up, we have Chris Helali, who is the International Secretary of Party of Communists USA, coming from Vermont. Assalamu alaikum, greetings uh, everyone. Uh, it's a tremendous honor and pleasure to be here with you all and I want to extend our uh, deepest thanks, our warmest greetings and our salute to the comrades of Workers World, to the first secretary, uh, comrade Larry Holmes and to everyone here who has made this possible. Um, and of course, uh, we are on sacred ground. We're on, uh, you know, thinking back to uh, growing up in, in a family, uh, a Muslim family, and thinking about, of course, uh, uh, Hajj Malik, of course, of Malcolm X. And to be in this room here uh, is a deeply spiritual, especially for us Shia, who have uh, in Iran and, and throughout the world have a, 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 an understanding of martyrdom, 
an understanding of those who have been killed, and the slogan that uh, every day is Ashra, everywhere is Karbala, uh, thinking about Imam Hussein. So thinking also about the, the martyrdom here. I want to... <laughs> I don't think uh, my words will do as much justice as the words of uh, Palestinians themselves. And of course, uh, combining uh, the Palestinian resistance and uh, this uh, centenary celebration of Lenin, I could think of only the poet Mahmoud Darwish, uh, who is considered the national poet of Palestine and was himself uh, awarded uh, the Lenin Prize, um, which he valued above all else uh, in the 1980s by the Soviet Union. And so I will read from his poem uh, because I think that it will center us um, here today. Write down, I am an Arab. My ID card number is 50,000. My children eight, and the ninth is coming after the summer. Are you angry? Write down, I am an Arab. I work with my toiling comrades in a quarry. My children are eight, and out of the rocks, I draw their bread, clothing, and writing paper. I do not beg for charity at your door, nor do I grovel at your doorstep tiles. Does that anger you? Write down, I am an Arab, a name without a title, patient in a country where everything lives on flared up anger. My roots took firm hold before the birth of time, before the beginning of the ages, before the cypress and olives, before the growth of pastures. My father, of the people of the plow, not of noble masters, my grandfather, a peasant, of no prominent lineage, taught me pride of self before reading of books. My house is a watchman's hut of sticks and reed. Does my status satisfy you? I am a name without a title. Write down I am an Arab, hair coal black, eyes brown. My distinguishing feature on my head, a kufiya topped by the igal, and my palms rough as stone scratch anyone who touches them. My address an unarmed village, forgotten, whose streets are nameless, and all its men are in the field and quarry. Are you angry? Write down, I am an Arab, robbed of my ancestors' vineyards and of the land cultivated by me and all my children. Nothing is left for us and my grandchildren except these rocks. Will your government take them too, as reported? Therefore, Right at the top of page one, I do not hate people, I do not assault anyone, but if I get hungry, I eat the flesh of my usurper. Beware, beware of my hunger and of my anger. Celebrating 100 years since the passing of Comrade uh, Vladimir Lenin is an important milestone. It's an opportunity for us to regroup, to rethink, to criticize and self-criticize, and to rebuild and keep the struggle going. And so after a century under the banner of Lenin, I believe that the next century will be under that banner. And that banner... That banner, that banner is not only the symbol of Palestine, it is the symbol of all oppressed people. You see it everywhere throughout the world. What we are witnessing today, this genocide is not in vain. This genocide, this blood spilt by innocent civilians, by Palestinians in their tens of thousands, will be the beginning of something new, will lead to something new. I believe it. Millions believe it. You believe it. And that's what counts. That's what drives us. That's why we are not simply wrapped up in our 
communities, in our neighborhoods, but we have an internationalist focus. We know that our liberation is tied to the liberation of all people around the world. My time is limited, and I want to emphasize these past decades, Workers' World Party has done something that very few could do or did do in the United States. They stood when it was inconvenient, when it was not in vogue, uh, when it was brutally repressed and spurned by many on the so-called left. They stood by all oppressed people. And we honor that legacy. We honor the legacy of your comrades standing, not only in solidarity with the Palestinians, but in solidarity with the DPRK, in solidarity with Zimbabwe, in solidarity with Cuba, with Venezuela, all of these struggles around the world, struggling for peace at the time of the Iraq war, where I became, uh, as a red diaper baby, highly politicized and involved in the anti-war movement in high school as the United States drove, uh, drove this military into war uh, in Iraq, in an unjust and illegal war that killed almost, uh, if not more than a million people. We remember that, and I want to emphasize today that as we struggle with workers, as we organize, as I do as a high school teacher, and I serve on the executive of the NEA in New Hampshire, I struggle with my students daily to open their minds and to open their hearts to other people, to hear other perspectives, to learn about the blood spilt here, because the blood spilt in Palestine centuries ago was the blood spilt by indigenous people here, struggling against the conquistadors. And before that, it was the struggle against the crusaders who came in the first phase back to Palestine to take the land away from the people who were there. We must emphasize the importance of building an international movement, an international anti-imperialist, anti-fascist, anti-capitalist movement, as the First Secretary rightly pointed out. We are prepared to join you in that effort. We are prepared to work with all of the parties and governments around the world who struggle against imperialism, who struggle against colonialism. So let us say together, down with imperialism, colonialism, and Zionism. Free, free, Palestine. free, free, Palestine. from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Thank you, comrades. Next up, we have a message that has been sent by Sergio Rodriguez Gelfistin, who's the former director of the international relations of the presidency of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela and the former ambassador of Venezuela to Nicaragua. And the statement will be read by Marina Samuel. Good afternoon. Amid the horror exposed by Israel's colonial and imperialist aggression against the Palestinian people, we commemorate the centennial of Lenin's death. It would seem a paradox to commemorate something, almost anything, when a whole people is suffering the unspeakable at the hands of the Zionist entity that acts with the US empire's backing. In his article, Socialism and War, written between July and August 1915, Lenin aimed to clearly show what imperialism means. He exposed that from 1876 onwards, thanks to a highly developed capitalism, nations whose people in the past had fought for freedom after 1876 became the oppressors and enslavers of most of the populations and nations of the globe. Thus, Lenin brought to light that between 1876 and 1914, Six great powers seize nearly 10 million square miles of territory. This is an area two and a half times the size of Europe. Unfortunately, more than 100 years later, this domination continues, either directly or masked by new forms of rule. 
The current situation in Palestine is one that most crudely exhibits the situation. But it is not the only one in all the regions of the planet where the specter of colonialism continues to make its presence felt as a brutal expression of imperial control. Already in 1915, Lenin pointed out that everyone knows that the colonies have been conquered by blood and fire, that their inhabitants are barbarously treated and exploited in a thousand ways. The presence on the planet of the colonial regime Lenin denounced more than 100 years ago is an affront to humanity. To that extent, to fight for this regime's extermination and disappearance remains a present task. In this way, we will be able to pay homage in some way to that of the, of the outstanding leader of the workers who with his ideas and actions showed us the way to liberation and to a better world in which there are neither exploiters nor exploited, nor colonizing powers in colonized countries. Thank you. Next up, we invite Brenda Stokely, who is the former president of the AFSCME 1707 and Local 215, co-convener of the New York City Labor Against War and the co-chair of the Million Worker March. As I look out here, the first thing I see is my brother. Excuse me. And he both empowers me, but also makes me mad, more mad than I have ever been growing up in this country. This is a country that everybody around the world expects for us to do the right thing. And the right thing is all the things that people were talking about today. The right thing is, yes, the young people are going to have to take the load of some of this. But we have to also take a load, those of us who have more de de decades on, to be able to bring to people some of the things that they need to know, and also some of the things that we did wrong, and the, some of the things that we did right. Because, and, and one of them is the issue in terms of people not wanting purpose, uh, right in, the, in, in, in some of the um, communist um, organizations, there, there was fights about what's going to happen in terms of the, the, the resolutions that were being put forth before them about nationhood, about self-determination, and what that means to the party. That was some people's. But Lenin's view was that you're wrong. The colonists that have are in everybody's communities up to the now, even with all their bases that they have in everybody's uh, uh, place. We should take these the questions still, because they still exist, to people to ask them. Because when I leave here, I'm taking the brother's line. When you leave a meeting like this about the stuff that we're talking about, you need to have a plan about what you're going to do when you get home. You better have a plan on what organization that you're going to stick with, what organization you might not. You're going to, everybody knows, or, or they have really, those people, all the people sitting here and others know what the problems are. What the people don't know is how can we fight back and win. Because where there, there's oppression, there is going to be resistance. And the, re the resistance, that's what we need to infer, that, 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 that fire in people. We can't, we have to talk to our children. 
the people that are in schools. We have to talk about our, our elders who were say, I'm waiting for you all to tell us about this because we do need to get on this. Your neighbor, where you shop. When people say that I don't know how to do this, you talk to people all the time. Take that time that you're talking to them about telling them what the imperialists are, who they are, because they've been lying all these years. We need to have our own instruments to be able to get all of the truth out there. And we do need to be united because they know what works, the, the imperialists. It always works. If you can get people uh, um, separate from each other, whether it's in the workplace or whether it's in school or whether it's anywhere in this country, that they're trying to always come out with somebody that they could blame their stuff on. So it's always somebody else that made this happen. It was somebody else's foolishness to even think that certain these things should be been, been addressed, addressed to you. So we need to do that. And I, I came here with a different piece to say, <laughs> but I'm not doing that to myself or to you. <laughs> but I, I, I mean, I have, these are the, are the pa packages that deal with the Negro question at, at that time and also um, South Africa. It was the same thing and they won. They won that there are those resolutions that we're gonna go in and they're gonna stay in and they're gonna be honored wherever, wherever you are. Because it was very important because some of the people were acting like more like the people who were oppressing us in South Africa and also in terms of the nation that's mainly designed in the South of this, of this, this United States. So we have to build, go back to some history, but we also have to come up with new ways and better ways to get to people and to talk to them I mean, a lot of times people are using films now to take some of the young people back that weren't there when something happened. And, they, and one that sticks in my mind was when some uh, professor showed um, some young high school students about the civil rights, um, um, I'm sorry. No, the, it was the one when they, when they took the, ch the children's march in the South. And they had never heard about that. And just to say, most people don't because they're not giving them that information in school. They want to now burn all the books and everything. But so they sat there, and at the end, they said, those children are the same age we are. And we said, yeah. And she said, and they did all of that? Yes. She got up. She said, well, we can do it here. And they organized the, uh, the walk here the over the, up in Brooklyn from over to um, the city hall. The thing is, I'm trying to not do it too, I'm not, I'm 78, give me a little break. I don't, can't pull all my words together as I used to. But the point that I'm trying to get to is that we are going to fight and continue to fight whatever ages we are, and we are going to be successful but we can't leave meetings like this without a, a plan for what we're gonna do when we leave here. Uh, and who are we gonna talk to? I was in one of these kind of gatherings and somebody got up and said, okay, who, when we leave here, whose house are you going to? Who's, when you make your phone call, who are you gonna call? What are you gonna talk about? You know, and, and, and this works because people start out with organizing by going to the leaders or, uh, that, is, that are in the place. They, you don't need to be there, but if you're in a, in, a, in a workplace and you are the ones that somebody always comes to to try to get help when things go wrong with the bosses, you're the one that should be organizing there. So you go around and you find those kinds of people, and, and that's in every community. Any community that you go, there's people like that. And so that we have to span it out. We can't just leave it in a hovel because we know what was in the papers that Lenin wrote. We have to take it to the people that don't know what they said, he said, or who he is, and then 
tear down the, the, the way that communism and imperialism is thought and put in the minds of the people, we must change that. And one way, when I first started with knowing about all of this, I had to go and find more information. And I had to not be afraid that somebody's gonna call me a communist or a socialist. And I never, never kept that away from anybody, never. But I had to tell the people what that meant. And some people would come up to you and say, oh yeah, you can't be, what? I said, well, tell me what is socialism about? What, what did they tell you? And I said, no, it's, that's not it. And then I just explained it to them and they said, oh, that's what it means? Uh, what is imperialism? So we have to take time because people have been inoculated with toxic bullshit in this country. And we need to clean out their minds. And that's why that brother makes me cry. What did he say? Take the chains off your, of your head. That's the first place. So we have to encourage you. Don't be afraid. Don't think that somebody's going to do something to you because you talk like that. Now, you know there's some snakes in everywhere, so you don't tell them about it. But <laughs> you tell, you tell, we have to do this. And it doesn't, anything that all the people, Harriet Tubman, all these people, how did they do it? They just damn did it. They just damn did it. They said, I'm going to do it, and that's what I'm going to do. And if you don't want to come with me, if you do come with me and get scared, you're going to get dead. <laughs> so we have to, people have to know the heroic people and what they did, not to just get, give them plateaus, oh yes, that's wonderful, but it's because it tells you you can do it yourself. And it's not on one person. We don't have no messiahs. You put your foot down on the, on, the, on the ground and you march with everybody else and you organize with everybody else. You don't leave it for somebody else to do it. That's not the kind of movement we're talking about. Because even if you do it, you're not gonna last very long. Everybody has to be a leader. Everybody has to be a communist. Everybody has to be against the, the, uh, uh, the, this whole country the way that it's built. And everybody needs to deal with the issues in terms of, that we don't want to talk about, of, of color, of racism. You know, because all of this is like trying to say one group of people are better than us, and therefore we could kill them, we can go to their cemeteries and dig them up. You know, we can do anything but the right thing. So we need to find out radio stations, more radio stations in your community, get online with them. Everywhere we should be around to get all the messages up because the times ain't gonna do it for you. Thank you. Next, we have a message that was sent by the International Committee of the Danish Communist Party, and the statement will be read by Peter Gilbert from North Carolina. Good evening, comrades. Uh, this is from the International Committee of the Danish Communist Party, a party with a strong record of combating Islamophobia in Scandinavia and protesting U.S. and NATO bases in Denmark. As a small imperialist country, Denmark has a precarious position. The Danish ruling class and capital has been forced to rely on alliances with greater imperialist centers for survival since the age of mercantilism. Today, those alliances take the form of a transatlantic alliance as well as the European Union. Internal contradictions between the NATO-US bloc and the EU have grown in intensity and keep growing. The more Western imperialism is losing its unipolar status in the world. For Denmark, we as communists and anti-imperialists have seen and protested an increased focus on the US alliance. Denmark is now on track 
to, st to spend 2% of its GNP within a few years. Some of this increase comes in the form of old weapon systems, tanks and fighter planes, taken out of storage and supplied to the front in Ukraine. The unprecedented military agreement directly between the United States and Denmark allows the U.S. to establish three actual military bases on Danish soil at existing military air bases. Communists and others have attempted to mobilize against the base deal without much success. The narrative of fear and necessity during the war in the Ukraine dominates public debate. We also see an echo of the Danish government's U.S. alliance in its unconditional support of Israel's genocidal war, where Danish arms companies have a crucial role in supplying the Israeli warplanes with lethal technology. The communists and anti-imperialist forces do play an important role in the multitude of protests all over the country in support of Palestine. In the capital of Copenhagen, we have held daily protest marches with thousands of protesters in demand of a ceasefire, an effort echoing the war around the world and inspiring millions outside our country. Denmark has not at all forgotten the EU. Under pressure from the war in the Ukraine, the government forced a referendum, and Denmark now can wage small imperialist wars in Africa for EU monopolies. As communists and anti-imperialists, we are now in a situation where we have no party in parliament supporting anti-imperialism, while we mobilize in the streets on an unprecedented scale. The challenge is to turn the massive and nearly daily turnouts at rallies all over the country into a more coherent movement. Thank you. So last, but certainly not least, we have a video from Booker and Jiza Omoli, who is the Vice Chairperson and National Organizing Secretary of the Communist Party of Kenya. The main issue in our country is that the politicians continue to divide the Kenyan population on illusions. This country has only two tribes. The haves and the have not. The war we have in our country is a class war and not a tribal war or a religious war or a gender war. It is a war where people are fighting to survive, but others are fighting to keep people poor so that they can continue to exploit them. President Ruto's administration, instead of retaining subsidies to cushion the poor people, actually lifted the safety nets. And on the same age, the Kenya Kwanzaa government applied a raft of loans from IMF and World Bank. While on the same issue, at home, increasing taxes and lying to the Kenyan people that increasing taxes will basically reduce public borrowing from IMF and World Bank. So the fundamental thing is that those demonstrations were anti-interference of Kenyan domestic policy by two rogue financial institutions, which is IMF and World Bank. We reject the current consensus that is being built around the ruling class. We see that the Azimio-led alliance and the Kenya Kwanzaa government have started a bipartisan talks. Who is leading the bipartisan talks? We've had President Ruto is talking about the intervention of the United States. We have had Mwishmiwa Raila Molodinga talking about the intervention of Commonwealth countries. So that means these discussions are not about the plight of the Kenyan people. It is actually about the interest of the ruling class. The problem is not an individual problem. Even if we had another president, the problem will persist. Because for us, we see the problem as a systemic problem. We think that the neo-colonial system, where the white British minority, the so-called settler colonialism, left our countries, but left the same colonial structures. So we replaced the white person with a black oppressor. So until we break the neo-colonial system, until we break 
this capitalist system that continues to dominate our country, the problem will continue to persist. That concludes panel three. Thank you very much.